Thanks, Ariel, for the introduction. And um, I'm going to talk about what can crypto do for decentralized mechanism design. This is based on joint work with Hao Chong and Iling Shi, and um, feel free to interrupt me at any point with questions. So in our work, we focus on a specific kind of decentralized mechanism called transaction fee mechanism. So what is a transaction fee mechanism? As we know, real estate on blockchain can be expensive. So users want to have their transactions confirmed. And often they would have to compete with each other to get their transactions confirmed. So basically, we can view this as an auction, where the miner who mines the current block acts as the auctioneer. And it sells the space in the block to the users. The users, they compete with each other to get a slot in the block. So in this case, we need to run a so-called transaction fee mechanism. It decides which transactions to confirm, how much they pay, and how much the miner gets. As a heads up, for the case of transaction fee mechanism, it is not necessarily the case that all payments go to the miner. Some of the payment or even all of the payments can be burned, and we will see a lot of such examples later in this talk. For example, Bitcoin employs a very simple first price auction. Let's say the block size is K, so we can confirm at most K bids. In first price auction, the K highest bids are confirmed, and they each pay their own bid. All payments go to the miner. However, as we have learned from algorithmic game theory course, first price auction is not good because it incentivizes untruthful bidding. For example, it may be my best strategy to bid the amount that make me barely enough to be the top K bids. So I will be confirmed and pay the least possible price. What's interesting here is that actually all classical mechanisms we are familiar with fail for the purpose of transaction fee mechanism. For example, we know that second price auctions are gold standards in classical mechanism design because they incentivize truthful bidding. So why not just use a second price auction? In the blockchain contest, the second price auction actually becomes a K plus one price auction. Here, the K highest bids are confirmed and they each pay the K plus one bid as the price to the miner. For example, here, the bid nine and seven are confirmed and they will each pay price five uh, price five to the miner. So what can go wrong here? On blockchain, the miner is also a strategic player. So a strategic miner will inject a fake bid six. So now the confirmed bids will end up paying six rather than five to the miner. So miner can actually gain more by deviating. More generally, in classical setting, we usually assume that the miner or the auctioneer is fully trusted, and we care about designing mechanisms that incentivizes the users to bid truthfully. However, on blockchain, the miner is also a strategic player, so it may also have incentive to cheat and not implement the mechanism honestly. This is the reason that uh, classical mechanisms are not a good fit for the purpose of transaction fee mechanism. So it is important for us to understand what properties do we want? What desired properties make us a dream transaction fee mechanism? Recently, a line of work looked into this space and most of them agree that the following three properties are important. The first one is called user incentive compatibility, UIC. Here, we want to make sure that a user is incentivized to bid its true value. So uh, where this true value represents its maximum willingness to pay. And this is the same notion as considered by classical mechanism design. In addition, we also want minor incentive compatibility. So we want to design a mechanism that, such that the miner is incentivized to implement the mechanism honestly. Last but not the least, we also want a third property called side contract proofness. On blockchain, it is very easy for players to form binding side contracts. And in particular, they can rely on smart contracts as enforcement to split out their joint game. And this is happening in the real world where there are like middleman platforms like Flashbots, whose whole purpose is to facilitate such minor user coalition. So we also want this third property called C-side contract proofness, or CSCP for short. In particular, if a miner clued with up to C number of users, and their goal is to maximize their joint utility, 
we want to make sure that their best response is to follow the protocol honestly. So among these three properties, the last two arises in this new decentralized environment, and these are exactly the challenges that we're facing that makes the design of transaction fee mechanism depart a lot from that of transaction fee uh, from classical mechanism design. So in the main body of this talk, I'm going to assume C equal to one. So minor clue with only one user for simplicity. And at the end of the talk, I will talk about the general case where the minor actually includes with more users. So now that we conclude all these desired properties we want, Tim Roth Garden asked in his EC21 work, can we have a dream transaction fee mechanism? The closest we have come to in terms of a dream transaction fee mechanism is actually Ethereum's EIP 1559, which was rolled out just last year. So let me quickly mention how it works. EIP 1559 meant to gracefully switch between two modes of operation. When the network is congested, so we have more demand than space, it approximates the behavior of a first price auction, which as we mentioned, is not good. When the network is uncongested, so we have more space than demand, in this case, it approximates a simple posted price auction. In posted price auction, there is a simple, simple, offer called, uh, simple ticket or leave it offer called the posted price. If you bid at least the posted price, you will be confirmed and you pay the posted price. Otherwise, you will not be confirmed. And here, all payments are burnt. You may find this burning rule quite interesting because this is typically, this is not something that would appear in a classical mechanism design. Actually, we will later show that this burning rule is necessary to guarantee the incentive compatibility properties. So Timur Garden showed that AIP 1559 is good if we assume an infinite block size or equivalently when there is no congestion. So actually this post is posted price auction with burning satisfy all three properties we want if we assume an infinite block size. However, in practice, we may not always have infinite block size and congestion can happen. For example, when there is an NFT mint or the cryptocurrency price suddenly change, the number of transactions waiting to be confirmed may dramatically increase. And in this case, we will end up with a congestion. So in practice, finite block size can happen. So what about the, what if the block size is finite? In this case, we may not be able to confirm all bids that are at least the posted price. So a natural idea would be to say, sure, let's add a random selection in addition to the posted price. Let's randomly select K bids that are at least the posted price to confirm where this K is the block size. Still, each confirmed bid pay the posted price and all payments are earned. Is this a good transaction fee mechanism? Well, it is UIC and MIC, so it is incentive compatible against single user or the miner by the same reasoning for posted price auction, but it is not one SCP. So a miner including with one user have a strategy to increase their joint utility. To see why this is the case, let's consider an extremely simple example. Let's say the block size is one, so we can only confirm one bid, and the posted price is five. Here, all bids are at least the posted price. Note that the miner is the one who implement the mechanism. So now instead of really randomly choosing a bid to confirm, it will just confirm its cluding user's bid. So this strategy strictly increased the probability of its cluding user getting confirmed, and thus it increased the joint utility of this coalition. So this posted price uh, with random selection does not satisfy all three properties. It turns out this is no accident. In their SOTA 23 work, Elin Shin and Hao Chong showed that for finite block size, no non-trivial transaction fee mechanisms satisfy all three properties. And by trivial, we mean that no transaction is ever confirmed. This is quite pessimistic. So we want to circumvent this impossibility result. The simple example of the posted price auction with random selection actually gives us an intuition behind this impossibility result. The miner is the one who implements the mechanism, so it will always choose the way that benefits itself the most to implement. So a natural idea to circumvent this impossibility result is to enforce honest implementation of the mechanism. And this is exactly what cryptography can do. 
So we asked, can we use cryptography to help circumvent this impossibility results? And we give a positive answer. In our work, we propose a new model called multi-party computation MPC assistant model, which guarantees honest implementation of the mechanism and thus circumvent the previous impossibility result. However, even if it guarantees honest implementation and thus brings the design space closer to that of the classical mechanism design, it does not trivialize the problem because of the decentralized nature. Here, the miner can still inject fake bits, and still we care about the incentive compatibility against minor user coalition. And these are typically not considered in classical mechanism design. In particular, we show that even under the MPC assistant model, for a mechanism to satisfy all three properties, the minor revenue must be zero. So all payments must be burned. But this is not very good because we want to incentivize the miner to implement the mechanism for us. So in the following work, we, uh, we assume an extra reasonable world assumption and we give a mechanism that achieves positive and even optimal minor revenue under this extra assumption. So in the rest of the talk, I will mainly introduce our MPC assistant model and give a mechanism in the MPC assistant model that satisfies all three properties we want for finite block size. So the architecture of our MPC assistant model works as follows. Now, instead of having a single miner implement the mechanism, we let a group of miners together to implement the mechanism. To do this, we first let each user very feebly secretly share their bids to the miners. Upon receiving this information, the miners interact among themselves to run a crypto primitive called multi-party computation based on the information they just received from the users. Cryptography guarantees that as long as there is a majority honest, honest majority among these miners, at the end of the computation, we will have a correct output of the transaction fee mechanism. So it helps to extract the cryptography out and think of it as an ideal functionality, which takes in user's bits as input and gives us the correct output of the transaction fee mechanism. And thus it guarantees honest implementation. Now with this MPC assistant model, let's revisit our simple example of posted price auction with random selection. Now it is guaranteed that the mechanism will really, ra will really randomly choose K bits to confirm. So the miner now cannot help its excluded user. Therefore, it sat this, simple, this simple auction in the MPC assistant model actually satisfy all three properties we want in a finite block size. So we circumvent the previous impossibility result. There are some more interesting observations I want to talk about this mechanism. So for this specific mechanism, all the incentive compatibility still holds, even if the coalition can decide their strategy after they see honest users' bids. So in game theory, this is called exposed incentive compatibility. Partly due to this reason, for this particular mechanism, we do not need a full-fledged multi-party computation, which can be very expensive. Instead, we only need a consensus among the group of miners to agree on the set of bits to consider, and plus a trusted randomness to select the k-confirmed bits for us. So this particular mechanism is potentially easy to implement. So as I promised, uh, I will talk about the case if the miner clued with more players. We have seen this posted price with random selection uh, that achieves all three properties we want if the miner clued with one user with a zero minor revenue. What if the miner clued with more users? Unfortunately, in our paper, we show that if a mechanism, even in the MPC assistant model, want to satisfy all three properties if the miner clued with two or more users, it must be the case that user social welfare is zero. So all users' utility must be zero. This is, this is quite degenerate, so we view it as an impossibility result. To circumvent this, we also consider another relaxation called epsilon incentive compatibility. Here, we allow the coalition to gain a little bit, but no more than epsilon more utility, comparing to honest strategy. And we give a mechanism that satisfies all three properties, even if the miner include with two or more users, with optimal social welfare. However, we also show that even we Again, even under this relaxation where we allow the coalition to gain a little bit, 
the minor revenue must still be bounded by some function related to epsilon. So to get rid of that, in our following work, we consider a reasonable world assumption under which we give mechanisms that achieves optimal minor revenue. So um, this topic has been discussed by the community a lot recently. Our understanding for a transaction fee mechanism is still in a very early age, and we are eager to seek for help from cryptography because there are strong intuitions that cryptography can help. But it is not clear how it helps and what kinds of formal guarantee it provides. Our work make this first conceptual contribution, but still little is understood, so there are many interesting open questions left. So first, um, in our work, because we are, we're focusing on building the understanding the game theoretic landscape, and we focus on circumventing the previous impossibility result, we consider a very simple model. In practice, the model is way more complicated. Transactions can of different sizes, the order of confirmation actually matters, and such auction is running repeatedly again and again on blockchain. So it, it is interesting to consider how do we build a more complicated model and what kinds of formal guarantee we have. And also there are other kinds of decentralized mechanisms like Google Ad Exchange, which allow the advertisers to buy digital advertisement from publishers. Um, Google was sued this January for monopolizing the market, so it would also be interesting to see how we can use cryptography to help design a good ad exchange mechanism such that we do not need to rely on trust for platforms like Google. So I will stop here. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Um, so, like, you mean when, when we consider, if I understand you correctly, you ring there are like, like spamming or a censorship attack? Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think, so that is not considered in our model because, like, uh, we focus on the, we, we build a very generic MPC model. So I think that is part of the consensus layer. If we actually, ins uh, we actually implement the, instantiate the ideal functionality with uh, consensus plus trusted randomness. Um, but if we instantiate with a full-fledged MPC, then I think with honest majority, there is no such problem because the users like very few believe they can share their bits among all the miners. So yeah, I think in that full instantiation, there is no such problem. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.